So we're going to talk about hydraulic steering here in this uh, presentation, and we're just looking at, uh, to begin with, an, an agricultural tractor. And this system is um, typical of a machine that's got full hydraulic steering and a steering wheel. Uh, so they're showing a steering unit in here. Lots of different names for these in industry. Uh, steering control valve is what I've always been calling it, but hand metering unit, steering metering unit, steering unit. Uh, but it basically is our control valve for steering, and it's ultimately what the steering wheel is attached to. This uh, tractor must have tilt steering or something the way they've drawn it, because I see the, can see the need for at least a U-joint in there, the angle that the wheel's on compared to the, to the steering unit. But there's a spline into the end, and it's basically a rotary control valve uh, that's going to direct the oil to the right and left ports for steering. Um, but it's a little more involved than that um, because it's, it's got a gerotor section in here too that we'll look at as well. But that's our, our steering unit. Uh, we've got a hydraulic pump. A little odd in this animation that they've just sort of drawn it as a rectangular cube there. But uh, that pump driven by the engine would be supplying oil up this line to port P on the steering unit. And then port T on the steering unit would go back to our tank or reservoir. Uh, and then the pump's drawing oil in from the tank. Again, a little odd that they have a filter on the suction side for mobile hydraulics, but we'll give them that. The rest of the animation is good. Uh, then they've got lines left and right going to, in this case, a double acting balanced type steering cylinder. So they've laid those components out for us and where they basically reside on one particular machine. So here we've zoomed in on the uh, steering metering unit itself and disassembled it. And in doing so, we can see there's a section in the bottom here, uh, now at the right side of the screen, where we've got a gerotor uh, that they don't define as a gerotor pump and they don't define it as a gerotor motor. As we'll see, its role can actually be either. Uh, if you're steering very aggressively, uh, then this gerotor can act like a pump. Uh, if you're steering gradually, then the gerotor can actually act like a uh, hydraulic motor and assist you in turning the steering wheel. Um, but uh, it's basically splined right through the control valve section uh, to the, the steering wheel shaft. So the gerotor star, the inner gear, turns with the steering wheel. And then it turns through a, a drive shaft. And the drive shaft uh, has some, it's kind of a wobble uh, design. It can, because the star has to wand, walk around in an orbit inside the outer gear of the gerotor section. Uh, this kind of has a loose fitting pin that drives it. Uh, and then there's, I call this a wear plate. I've always called it a port plate. It's got a bunch of porting holes through it that connect the gerotor section to the control valve section. Uh, and it's generally steel, so it's not much of a wear plate, so I'm just not sure why they chose that terminology, but we'll go with it. And then here's the rotary spool valve part of the assembly. So there is a, uh, a sleeve on the outer part here, and there's a spool inside it. And the sleeve has, because it's a rotary spool and sleeve, the sleeve itself has a bunch of these uh, sort of Swiss cheese holes through it that do the porting. And they connect through the body. Again, some of the holes port down through the port plate into the gerotor section and back. Others are going to be responsible as the uh, spool turns inside the sleeve for directing oil to the right and left steer. So the operator's input through the steering wheel comes in through this end of the control valve and there's a spline that engages with the spool so the operator's turning the spool uh, but there's a pin that goes through the spool it fits loosely through the spool and tightly in the sleeve in this bore here uh, and then loosely through this opening in the spool but as the operator turns the spool ahead of the sleeve either clockwise or counterclockwise eventually the spool and sleeve will start rotating together but initial movement of the operator's uh, input through the steering wheel is going to be to turn the spool ahead of the sleeve clockwise if you're turning right counterclockwise if you're turning left and that initial movement of the spool inside the sleeve, sort of upsetting the centered position between the two, is what's going to cause 
the oil to flow out the R or L port, depending on whether you're going clockwise or counterclockwise, respectively. So sleeve and spool of the housing goes over that. Now we're going to see a 3D animation. So here's what's happening in the neutral position. Now this particular tractor that we're looking at is an open center uh, control valve for the steering. We will uh, eventually see closed center uh, control valves used with load sensing, but this particular one's just a fixed displacement pump and an open center control valve for steering. So we've got oil flowing from the pump in through the uh, housing of the valve and the operator's not steering, we're in neutral. So the hands are off the steering wheel. Uh, the oil's flowing through some holes in the sleeve in about this location on the sleeve. And then it's flowing through a slot in the spool and then flowing out to tank. So in the neutral position, we don't want any oil going to the left port for left steering or the R port for right steering. We're just going pump to tank. Now, when the operator begins to steer, makes a right turn, the input again is through this spline into the spool. So the operator is going to be turning the spool clockwise. And in here you can see there's some leaf springs, and those leaf springs are what center the spool in the proper centered position of the sleeve. So when the operator begins to turn the spool clockwise, what's going to happen is these leaf springs are going to get compressed, and the spool is going to rotate clockwise ahead of the sleeve for a right turn. And when that happens, uh, so the spool initially turned ahead of the sleeve, those leaf springs got compressed in one direction, and then the pin that loosely fits through the spool and tightly into the sleeve, once the springs are compressed, then the spool bumps up against that pin and starts to rotate both the spool and the sleeve together. So they can both turn in there, but only once the spool is turned ahead of the sleeve in whichever the intended direction is. So the first part of movement what you may have noticed happening there is oil from the pump started to get ported down to the gerotor section through the port plate, what they call the wear plate. Uh, that's going to cause the gerotor gear, the inner gear, to start rotating inside the outer gear. Um, but the operator is already rotating it anyways because that shaft down through the uh, spool and sleeve also engages the star of the gerotor. So as they're starting to turn this, the gerotor is basically metering some of the flow here from red to uh, an orangey yellow color and you can see it coming back to the spool and sleeve as we're making a right turn. And then it's getting ported through some lower holes in the spool and sleeve and out to the right port. So the point of that is to make this hydraulic steering feel a little more like automotive steering as the operator turns the spool in the sleeve. They have to turn this metering gerotor and they have to process the oil through the gerotor section and have it come back through the spool and sleeve before it goes to the right port. So the operator has to keep the steering wheel turning to keep processing oil through. And again that's what makes it feel a little more like automotive steering. If the operator makes a left turn, the same process happens but in the opposite direction. So they turn the spool counterclockwise ahead of the sleeve that compresses the leaf springs. Oil again is ported to the gerotor section, but now it comes back. If you're going counterclockwise, it comes back through the port plate to the left port. And then what they're not showing here is the rest of the circuit. If oil's going out the left port, then it's going to be returning from the steering cylinder in the right port here and back through the spool and sleeve and back to tank. So again, we can just do the right turn. Watch the oil go out to the port for right steering, come back in the left, and connect back to tank. Or we can do a left steer, or we turn counterclockwise, oil from the pump through the, the sleeve, through the gerotor section, to the left port, back from the right, and back to tank. Again, in neutral, the spool uh, is centered in the sleeve. Oh, I'm just going to pause it neutral here. So the spool is centered in the sleeve, oil is just going pump to tank. So, um, what's a little bit interesting about this type of steering, it feels very automotive, but it obviously isn't. 
uh, regardless of where we stop the steering wheel, these centering springs, these leaf springs in here, will recenter the spool in the sleeve. And that will basically stop the flow uh, from the pump to going from going to either left or right steering ports. And then our work ports will become blocked and that will hold our steering wheels at whatever angle they're at. So this is not like automotive steering in that uh, taking your hand off the steering wheel while you're traveling, the steering the steering wheels won't won't direct themselves back to a straight line position like you would with the caster and camber of, of automotive type steering or truck type steering. Uh, this doesn't have a return uh, function. It, it's going to stop wherever you stop. And also the steering wheel doesn't have really a straight ahead position. If you uh, keep cranking the wheel, what's eventually going to happen is we're going to hit um, a dead end of the balance cylinder. It's either going to be steered all the way left or all the way right. And at that point, if the operator steers aggressively, we'll start pumping oil over relief valves, which are not shown in this animation. But when we get to the schematic, we'll see that there are steering relief valves and we can, if we're strong enough, we can crank oil over the relief valves and have the steering wheel you know, turned around 180 degrees and then stop steering and then recenter it. And of course, our steering wheel doesn't have a, a neutral position. If you've got a, you know, a John Deere or a Caterpillar logo on the horn button here, uh, you might get in the cab of the machine and find that the logo is upside down when you're going straight ahead. Well, that's because, again, there's no reference point. All the steering do wheel does is turn the spool and sleeve. So you can crank the spool and sleeve and rotor section around and basically have it pointing any particular direction when you return to straight ahead steering so full hydraulic steering not going to find this on highway because uh, you know we've got a hydraulic cylinder here responsible for steering the wheels and uh, if a hose blows here you know we've got a system that's not as not as uh, safety conscious in design as automotive steering now you might think of power steering as having a hydraulic system on it this is not power assisted steering like you would find in automotive this is full hydraulic steering